Hello everyone, my name is Alan and this is the first edition of the Urban Harvester. We're here in downtown Calgary where we recently discovered this empty lot that has been undisturbed for probably two years and uh, we went for a walk in here the other day and found a, at least a dozen edible species. The first one we're going to talk about is the wild mustards and there's a variety of wild mustards in Alberta. Uh, this is one of them. They've been used for food for a very long time and also have medicinal purposes. Um, they help digestive juices. Uh, they're used to heal wounds in a poultice for congestions in the chest. Uh, I won't be able to cover everything that you can do with these plants because I honestly can't remember all the things. So I encourage you to uh, do research on the internet, look in books and, and find out what you can do with these plants. This is another member of the mustard family and this is called peppercress, a common name. When these are young and green, you can pick these little pods off here and put them in a salad and they have a really nice uh, peppery type of flavor. The seeds are very, very small, so harvesting them for seeds is a little bit difficult, but you can also do that. They can be used in soups, stews, and really enhance the flavor. Also have some nice medicinal properties. When they're younger, you can see that the, the little yellow seeds here. And the best way to do this is to crumple up the husks and drop this into water. The seeds will sink, the husks will float. Then you scrape all the husks, or the chaff away and uh, dry the seeds out. And that's how you get those. This is my favorite member of the mustard family. These are called penny crests. Uh, when they're young, in the spring, you can pick the green pods and just put them into your salad and they have a they have a really nice little sharp taste to them. When they get older, the seed pods dry out and again, you'd use the same process. You crumple up the, the husks, the seeds fall out. And these have a really nice uh, garlicky flavor about them. And again, they can be used on their own and prepared into a mustard or you can put them in a soup or a stew to enhance the flavor. I've also noticed that if you collect these in the spring, after they've sat out for the winter, they gain a lot of heat. Now, as I said before, I encourage you to do more research on these plants and find out. I can't cover everything that they do. I can't even remember everything that they do. So do some research on your own and find out all the uses that you can use these plants for. Okay, we're going to look at something that's probably a little more familiar to a lot of you out there. This is German chamomile, and uh, I'm not really up to speed on all the uh, medicinal qualities. Uh, one thing I should mention though is when the components inside wild plants are usually a lot stronger than what they are in domesticated plants. And there is some uh, question about using chamomile when taking aspirin can actually cause some bleeding, uncontrollable bleeding problems. So again, it pays, I mean, it's the same chamomile you buy in the store, but it pays to know what you're doing when you're mixing compounds together. Not that everybody would have a problem with them, but some people might. So, you know, these are actually very nice and, you know, you can just pick one and have a little munch. It has a nice refreshing flavor and kind of a pick me up along the trail if you're out walking. And we're going to harvest a bunch of these today and dry them so we can make tea from them later. There is just literally thousands of these growing in this field, completely on their own. And uh, I just noticed here, just behind this patch of chamomile, we have some poppies here. What I really like about these is how prolific they are. If, if you turn it upside down, the little holes, seeds come right out. But it's amazing how many there is in each one of these little pods. And I've been told that you can't transplant a poppy, that you actually have to grow it from seed. So you have to wait for it to pod out like that. And then you just get this magnificent amount uh, of seeds here. So again, this deserves a little bit of research. Don't go eating anything if you don't know what it is. But if it is the right one, then you're free and clear to use this in your baking. Yeah. 
Something else I noticed just right over here to our right here is these are wild oats. And this is a grain like any other grain. Uh, I've never actually found these before or harvested them, but I find them quite interesting. And when, you, when they dry out a little more, this will be a little harder, but you can see that there's a nice little grain inside here. And this can be used like any other grain. You can bake it into flour or into bread or grind it and make a flour out of it. And that's fair, that's fair size little grain too. So if you have a lot of these, then you've got something. And they're pretty tasty as grains go, you know, they're, they're not sharp or bitter or anything like that. Have a nice little flavor and probably quite a bit of nutritional value, although I'm not up to speed on that. But as I said, I encourage you to do your own research now that you know what the plants look like. This is the plant that originally attracted me to this field. Uh, I've been looking for a number of years and haven't found a species, but I was walking by here one day on the sidewalk and looked over and here it was. And this is known as the strawberry blight. It's high in vitamin A and all the B vitamins. And from what I've read, the little flower clusters here that look like berries usually are quite insipid and not very tasty, but this one is quite sweet. And, uh, has a really nice flavor about it. Um, the leaves are completely edible, especially when the plant is young. It contains oxalates, which in high doses can cause a few problems, but the natives also use these as a dye. And uh, it starts out red and then it changes color into a, a orangish and purplish color. And you can see that it, it almost resembles blood at first. But uh, many, many uses in many cultures, I've even heard that there was a certain group of monks that used this for some particular reason, but I'm not sure what that was. Again, there's just lots and lots of research to be done with these plants. If you trace back in time and see what people used to use them for, it's really amazing what you can uncover. And I think it's important that we start understanding and using these plants again. Uh, there could be things here that we have no knowledge of still at this date, you know, we might be curing diseases or who knows what. But here it is, uh, strawberry blight. This is one of my favorite plants, it's called yarrow. And it has uh, a great deal of uses, so many that I couldn't remember them off the top of my head. So I have one of my books here, one of my guidebooks, and I'm gonna read the paragraph that explains this plant from this book. This is from the Edible and Medicinal Plants of the Rockies, uh, written by Linda Kershaw. Uh, this is what she has to say about yarrow. And the Latin name is Achillea millifolium. As a food, some sources suggest parboiled yarrow as a vegetable, but most consider it too bitter to eat. In Sweden, these plants sometimes replace hops and beer. As a medicine, yarrow has been used for thousands of years as a styptic, a plant that stops bleeding. Achilles, the Greek hero for whom the genus was named, was said to have saved the lives of many soldiers by applying yarrow to their wounds. These plants contain alkaloids that have been shown to reduce clotting and have been used to suppress menstruation. They also have sedative, pain-killing, antiseptic, and anti-inflammatory and antispasmodic constituents that may help to relieve menstrual cramps. Yarrow leaves have been used in washes, salves, poultices for treating burns, boils, open sores, pimples, mosquito bites, earaches, sore eyes, and aching backs and legs. The tea has been taken as a tonic and as a treatment for colds and fevers because it stimulates sweating and lowers, lowers blood pressure. These plants also contain substances that stimulate salivation and the secretion of bile and gastric juices. Yarrow has been used to improve appetite and digestion, to speed labor, to heal the uterus after birth, and to treat diarrhea, urinary tract infections, and even diabetes. Mash leaves or roots were used as a topical anesthetic on aching teeth. And I can attest to that because I recently had a problem with my teeth. And um, I went and searched out some yarrow and chewed it up and used it as a poultice against my teeth. And uh, that infection has been gone for some two weeks now. And uh, yeah, you know, I was sure 
glad that it worked because nothing worse than a toothache, eh? Other uses, dried yarrow can be used for perfume or bath powder. Fresh leaves can be rubbed on the skin as an effective, though temporary, insect repellent. These hardy, attractive plants are excellent wildflower gardens. Uh, their spreading root stalks often creep into areas where they are not wanted. The, the attractive, spicy scented dried flower are a lovely in dried flower arrangements. Yarrow tea is said to make an excellent hair rinse. And there's a warning here. People with sensitive skin may react to these plants. Yarrow contains thujone, which is a toxic, which is toxic in large doses, and can cause miscarriages. So that's uh, quite an interesting plant. With a, it's a member of the aster family, with a lot of uses. And again, uh, the wild version also comes in a, a nice purple. And there's some subspecies uh, raised domestically, uh, cinnamon uh, and uh, pink and uh, various other tones. But there is the yarrow plant. Okay, well here we have another uh, wild mustard plant and I think the, the leaves are edible, probably better when the plant is young, not so bitter. But down here, ground cover, we have one of my favorite plants called chickweed. And uh, it's quite abundant when it does grow, and it tastes like fresh corn. Yeah, so it's really nice as a hint in a salad. And uh, you know, I'll do a little bug check. You don't want to be eating the bugs. Mm. Really has a very pleasant flavor, just like you're, you know, cutting fresh corn kernels off the cob. Chickweed.